through. Falcon Heavy uses two propellants, a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 or rocket propellant 1 as a fuel, and LUX or liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. Now, an oxidizer is a type of chemical that a fuel requires in order to burn. The liquid oxygen is chilled below its boiling point so that it has a much greater amount of mass per volume. So basically, we can load more of it into the vehicle. Our fuel is RP-1, essentially a purified kerosene. It is safe, easily available, and has a lot of history. And in fact, the Saturn V first stage flown from this very pad on the moon missions also used liquid oxygen and kerosene. And in addition to these two propellants, we also use the chemical TTEB or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane as an ignition source. The combustion of RP-1 and liquid oxygen is what makes the rocket go and it's the T-TEB that sets the match to the propellant mix. Now next up, the trusted structure next to the vehicle. Tanks are pressing for a strong back retract. And there's that call out just in time. The structure next to the vehicle is called the strong back or the TE. And in preparation for retraction, the clamp arms will begin to open. There's clamp arms that just there that you can see on your screen below the fairing. Those will begin to open up, and once they are fully open... Back retract in progress. Once they are fully open, then the TE, or the transporter rector, can begin to retract away from the vehicle, and we did hear that call out that the TE retraction process has begun. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today's launch marks our second Falcon Heavy flight in just 11 weeks. And for those of you following along, a lot will happen in the first four minutes of flight. And there you can see on your screen that the clamp arms have begun to open. Falcon Heavy is in startup. And great news, Falcon Heavy, now in startup. We're now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. This is the mission director, go for launch. And excellent news, all systems are go for launch of Falcon Heavy with USSF 67. T minus 30 seconds. Plus 40 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. Now we did throttle down the engines around the T plus 40 second mark. Supersonic. In preparation for max Q. Max Q. And great call out there that we have passed through max Q. That's the largest mechanical stress on the vehicle on ascent. And incredible, incredible views there on your screen. Falcon Heavy in flight. Now, next events coming up will be booster engine cutoff or BECO, followed by separation of the side boosters and followed by their side booster boost back burns. And then will be center core main engine cutoff or what we call NECO. those events coming up here just under a minute away that will be Biko. that's where the booster the side boosters engines will shut down the center core will push those side boosters away from the vehicle then those two side boosters can begin to make their way back down to earth with their boost back burns 
and on your right hand screen you could see the views from each of those side boosters. Really incredible views here. Again, we will have Biko, side booster, boost back burn, followed by main engine cutoff of the center core here in just a few seconds. Side booster separation. Side core booster startup. Incredible views. We just had Biko and separation of the side boosters. And you can see on your left hand screen that the side boosters have lit back up. They are now in their boost back burn, making their way back down to earth. Now those side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. That's three of the nine M1D engines. Next up will be the conclusion. Next up will be the conclusion of those side booster boost back burns, followed by Miko on the center core, as well as stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES one or second stage engine start one. Now, as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we won't be showing second stage views after SES one. And additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover that vehicle, but we should have some great views like we are seeing right side now. Core, boost back, shut down. We should have some great views of those side boosters touching down for landing. Miko, stage separation confirmed. And next startup. And excellent views. We had the shut Stage one FTS to say has saved. We did have the shutdown Our of the boost signal. back burn. We did have the shutdown of the boost back burns on the side boosters as well as Miko on that center core and stage separation. We are waiting for confirmation of a call out of the fairing separation. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. So currently stage two is still making its way to its targeted drop off orbit while the boost, the side boosters are making their way back down to land. Again, these side boosters have another burn coming up. That will be the entry burn that will be three of nine M1D engines reigniting. That helps to slow the boosters down in preparation or as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. We got some views here from those side boosters there on your screen. Now at the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land to our side-by-side -side landing pads. If we have successful landings today, we'll mark the 163rd and 164th landing of an orbital class rocket. As I mentioned earlier, the center core it will be expendable and we are not attempting to recover it today. Side core entry burn startup. And there you can see on your screen, the entry burns for the side boosters have begun. They're just about 12 seconds long. PY FTS has saved and NY FTS has saved. And the entry burns for both side boosters have now concluded. Now next up will be the final burn for each of these side boosters. That is the landing burn. It is just a single engine burn, the center E9 engine. Each one of these M1D engines have about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So that is enough to slow the vehicle down just in time for landing. And you can see the coast of Florida in the background. But boosters are transonic. Now that landing burn coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Landing burn will last about 20 seconds long. 
And again, we are scheduled to land on landing zone one and landing Bruce, zone two. And there are those landing burns have begun on the side boosters. So let's watch as they touch down. Stage two is on thermal guidance. Stage two FTS is saved. Booster landing leg deploy. Touchdown for landing. That confirms successful landing of both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. Now with these two side boosters, this marks the 163rd and 164th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. It's also the 25th landing on landing zone one and the sixth landing on landing yeah, zone two. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring today's webcast to a, a close. Insertion.